I believe in God even when he is silent. There's a song written about light in the midst of darkness. It was written by a Jew in hiding during the Second World War in Cologne, Germany. And the beautiful words of faith were found scratched onto a wall and it says, I believe in the sun even when I don't see it. I believe in love even when I feel it not. And I believe in God even when he is silent. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and honored guests. This is the Kehira Strings Quartet and the Nagaland Chamber, Nagaland Conservatory of Music Choir from Dimapur. This memorial program to Oting Mon is to pay our tribute to the people of Oting and to express our deep love, our sorrow, and our pain to the families. I now invite the chairperson of the program, Reverend Senti Sashi Ayer, the senior pastor of our Baptist Church, to come and give the introductory remark and welcome. Let me read from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Although this is a very sad and heartbreaking moment in our Naka history, and particularly to the Oting villagers, I know our Heavenly Father is with us. He is looking after us and looking after all the people who are going through the most difficult moment, sorrowful moment in their lives. As we come together to pay tribute, I will come, each and every one of you, to this auspicious memoriam program. I also would like to extend a special welcome to our Honorable Chief Minister and his lady wife, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, and Shri T.R. Ziliang, our former Chief Minister, Shri Ich Angne Kunyak, President Kunyak Yunan Kuhima, Reverend Zilho Kiho, General Secretary in PCC, all dignitaries, special guests, program participants, the artists, and all the special people gathered here. I want to thank you for your prayers, for your presence, and for your solidarity. As a mark of our respect, in honor to the precious life who have lost your life, we will have two minutes silence. After a minute of standing, you will hear some instruments and then we will continue standing for the next minute with the instruments 
and our background. And after the two minutes is over, our NBCC General Secretary will come up to the stage and say the opening prayer. Shall we all stand up to our feet? While well, remain standing, we will receive the opening prayer. Allow me to read the word of God found in Psalm 137, verses 1 to 4, where it says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Indeed, this is a moment where we find difficult to sing God's song in a moment such as this. We are going through a very difficult time. The past few days has been a torment. We are angry. We think of revenge. We weep and we mourn. And our emotions are high. If there is one thing that we need at a time such as this, we need God to comfort us and to grant us wisdom. We can only look to God for the answer and to help us through. May we choose to depend on his leading even in a hard time such as this. As a mark of our tribute, may I ask all of you to put your right hand on your left chest as a symbolic sign that life 
belongs to God. And let us look to God in prayer. Father in heaven, the creator and sustainers of our lives, we acknowledge your infinite grace and plan for us. We ascribe to you the honor and the glory because you are the owner of our lives. Life has been difficult for us for the past few days and we try to mend the broken pieces on our own. Shattered by the senseless murder of the sons of the soil, our minds are restless and angry. Anger burning deep inside us as flesh and blood, we can only think of tooth for tooth and eye for an eye. But we also know that those acts of anger and tears can never bring back those who are mercilessly taken away from us. Above all, we are taught in your word to forgive those who trespass against us and to forgive those who persecute us. We are also taught to overcome evil with good. We need your grace, your strength, and the power to deal with our emotion that often turns to revenge. We ask of you to take control of our mind that good may overrule evil, that often time tries to break our spirit. As much as we pray for ourselves, we also pray for the families who are dealing with the loss of their loved ones. Give them the strength and the comfort we pray, O oh Lord. May they find comfort in you, knowing that they can also learn to do good to overcome the grief and mourning. We also pray that you will also speak to the leaders who are in power, that healing can begin only when the right decision is taken to honor and respect life. As we pray for the families of our boys in Mon District, we also pray for the family of General Bipin Rawat, CDS. The family that are going through losing of their loved one. We pray that your comfort will be upon each one of them, especially the wife and the children and the near and dear ones. As we spend this moment in remembrance, paying our tribute and stand in solidarity with those who have gone before us, I pray that your comfort will be their portion. Teach us to love each other more. May the time we spend this evening bring healing to our broken hearts. May you wipe the tears we continue to shed with the love and comfort which comes from you. We pray that, Lord, you will give us the strength even to stand strong in the midst of our emotions even this evening. We offer this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people say, Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
Cedite vexate, ligate, vin cules, cedite vexate, ligate, vin cules, cedite vexate, ligate, vin cules, cedite, 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 ligate, sate, vexate, 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 sate, 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 Thank you for that choral explosion of emotion through music expressed so beautifully. The conversion of Paul in the road to Damascus is a profound event in the faith of Christians. And may this song remind us to come closer to God. The next song, Michim Sangar Naro, metaphorically compares this generation to a flower which is fading and losing its fragrance. It is a call to the youth to rise from their present slumber. In Ao, it means youth, flower. Composed by Libukmar Sudir, the director of Nagaland Conservatory of Music. Conductor by Hito Kiho.
That was the Nagaland Conservatory of Music Choir. I now invite the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Sri Nipurio, to deliver the memorial message. Chairperson, respected church leaders, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today not just as the Chief Minister of Nagaland, but a fellow Naga and a fellow mourner. As we are all aware, this evening's program, In Memoriam, tribute is being held in honor and memory of our 14 Konyak brothers whose simple and innocent lives had been cut short by the most unfortunate and careless act of the Indian security forces. On the fateful evening of 4th December 2021. And in the unfolding events that followed, it is a solemn event. And I believe we are all participating in this memoriam with a prayerful heart, praying for the bereaved family members, in particular, and the people. Of general. The unfortunate incident at Otin village is a clear case of misuse of and abuse of the Armed Forces Special Power Act. It is a law having colonial genesis which is violative of human rights. It legitimizes killing on mere suspicion. This is not the first time where civilians have been burned, burned of the Dragonian law. Nagaland and the Naga people have opposed this act for decades, and it is a demand that will continue and to advocate for. Our Konyak brethren are the bravest and the fiercest among the Naga people. Your land is the land of the Angs. Understand your anger and sadness. I know that you can retaliate in violence, but I appeal to you not to retaliate violently, not because you cannot, but because you will not. Not because you are weak, but because you are strong. Not because you are cowardly, but because you are courageous. This is the time for you to defeat violence with non-violence. This is the time for the biggest Naga tribe to show the world that they also have the biggest heart. Let me take this opportunity to thank the families of the 14 deceased Konyak brothers, the ENPO, KU, KSU, KNSK, ENSF, and the Konyak people as a whole for displaying major maturity and magnanimity in the present crisis situation. A native 
Americans proverb says it is no longer good enough to cry peace we must act peace live peace and live in peace i appeal to all our naga people to shun the way of violence and to all our political groups to say farewell to arms unless we show and prove ourselves to be a peace loving people and non violent people our demand <coughs> for the repeal of aspa will carry less weight let us say that we do not want aspa but let us also show that we do not need aspa let us also make sure that we do not in any way allow any force to derail the hard won peace process nagas have suffered violence generation after generation and today we are saying enough is enough i also say with you enough is enough for the nagas music is an integral part of our culture no event whether joyous or sad is complete without music of course i wish we had gathered here for a joyous reason how true it is that where words fails music speaks i want to thank the friends and supporters from near and far who have shown support to the naga people politicians leaders who have spoken out for us in parliament news media and social media outlets media persons intellectuals tourists influencers who have supported the naga people in this very difficult time i thank the music fraternity of nagaland in particular for this memorial it is my hope that the rest of india and the world will not only understand our story but also feel our pulse of wanting lasting peace it is my prayer that during this dark time the light of christmas that christ brings will continue to shine in nagaland god bless kugnalim thank you sir for that deeply moving heartfelt and inspiring message the sanctuary choir with sahu pesie on the piano nurevile kate on the violin conducted by vimezo iralu
Shalom. And may the peace of God rule in our hearts. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. That was the sanctuary choir. I now invite Sri T. R. Ziliang, NPFLP and former Chief Minister of Nagaland to come and give his speech. Chairperson, Reverend <coughs> Sentis Shashi Ayer, Senior Past Pastor, Kohema, Ao Baptist Church. Kahuira Strings Quarters, Nagaland Conservatory of Music Choir. In this moment of sorrow, your melodies has given us courage and stand, strength to stand on in our own feet and say something about our sadness. Reverend Jelhu Kiyo, General Secretary, MBCC. Honorable Chief Minister, his lady wife, cabinet colleagues, and Friends, when we are happy or when we are angry, a lot of words flash in our mind to speak. And we forget to look at the watch and continue to speak. But in this kind of situation that we are facing for the last few days, we lost all the words out of sadness and out of anger. But God is with us and he will lead us to our destination and looking for the truth and looking for justice. God will surely support us and give us the courage to take it forward. It is with deep pain and sadness that I stand in your midst this afternoon. As we gathered here in memory of our cognac brethren who were mercilessly massacred by the Indian Army on December 4 and 5 in Mont District. On this occasion, I, on my own behalf and on behalf of the, my colleagues, extend deepest condolences to the very family members of our cognac brethren's in general. At a time when the Naga, Naga people are anticipating for a final breakthrough to the Indo-Naga political issue, the unfortunate incident has come as a huge shock to all of us. In a time like this, it is important for all of us to stand together unitedly and fight for our right. No amount of reason can justify the killings of innocent civilians and I urge upon the state government 
to leave no stone unturned in bringing the perpetrators of this felonious act of justice. Armed Forces Special Power Act has brought nothing good to the nation and each citizen ever since each inception in 1958, other than pain and suffering which has disintegrated the nation further. Therefore, it is high time for the top leaders of the country to identify all the black dots in Indian history and repeal such unwanted acts immediately in order to prevent all kind of inhuman, inhuman atrocities meted out to each citizen out of such black law. I understand that almost every year the state government, including governor of the state, has been writing to the Ministry of Home Affairs against application of Armed Forces Special Power Act in the state. However, the center continued with the extension of Armed Forces Special Power Act in our state every passing year till date, despite having ceasefire agreement between the government of India and NSCN-IM since 1997, followed by signing of framework agreement between the NSCN-IM and the government of India on August 3, 2015, and the signing of the agreed position between the seven NNPGs and the government of India on November, November 17, 2017. I strongly feel that it is high time for the entire Northeast region to come together and fight for our right. I also feel that the request met by some civil society organization to summon a special assembly session is valid and may be considered by the government of the day. In conclusion, I once again extend my deepest, deepest condolences to the bereaved families. Words are not enough to express the agony and sorrow you all must be going through. But I pray and hope that God will grant them peace and solace during this time of grief. We also continue to pray for the injured persons who are under treatment in various hospitals. With these few words, I thank the organizers for giving me this privilege to share a few of my thoughts. I got a call last night from CMO that if I'm coming to attend this uh, program, I'll be given time. So I'm thankful to the uh, CMO office. And with this, I conclude my speech. Thank you and Koknalim. Thank you, sir, for those moving words.
only scars in Shubatula in song, singing scars in heaven, with a special montage made to honor the persons who died during the tragic event. Taliang is a contemporary Christian artist and worship leader from Dimapur. He and his wife, Gentina, are the founders of the Love Sound movement. This is a movement to give a call first to the believers to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of love and peace. They believe unity in the spirit and love is the only contribution upon which God will pour out his blessings and as a result of that becoming a blessing to the world. Joining with him this afternoon is Ayim Longchar on the piano, Nuhe Kate on the violin and his wife on the backup vocals. They will bring to us a collection of songs of blessing. Thank you all for your patience. I have been asked to make an announcement that there is a black tar jeep that is parked in the parking lot, obstructing all the vehicles in the parking lot. You are kindly requested to go and move your vehicle immediately. Thank you. This occasion is such an appropriate and a very meaningful response to what has happened. Uh, may this be our prayer that God will give us his peace, the same peace that surpasses every 
human understanding and that the same peace will guard our hearts so that we are not overcome by grief, anger, or bitterness. Let us take this as an opportunity to overcome evil with good. I let this song, may this song encourage, especially our Konyak brothers and sisters. This is called Heroes Never Fly Away. Somebody feels all is lost Somebody's crying tonight Somebody feels like I'm told You will fall like you failed someone sometimes And there's no remedy how it feels and when you feel but that is not the end heroes never fly away but they only walk like any ordinary man facing the giants sometimes they cry but they again and you will shine again um, may this be our prayer also that God will give us the strength to look beyond our 
the tragedy and really look to him and really know that we have a God who still has good plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. Let us pursue peace. You know, we are called as peacemakers, the children of God. And as children of God, let us also remind ourselves that, you know, our inheritance is never cursed, but it is a blessing. And that's the heart of God. And even as we sing this song, the last song called The Blessing, let this be our prayer together in one faith. Let's just release this song of a blessing over, especially, you know, the people of Mon and also our own people. Thank you. Amen. That truly resounds the prayers that are rising within our hearts, all over our state, in every heart of the people. That may the Lord cause his face to shine upon us, bless us, and give us peace in a beautiful land. I now present to you E-Story, representing Konyak Yuks, who have come all the way from Mon town to be a part of this meaningful occasion. 
They will be singing two songs. The first is a folk song, and it reads, The Konyak people cry. In the land where the Ang resides, the tribe cries. Missing them when our land comes. Missing them when loved ones come home. The only memory left to their beloved mothers are the stones leading to their graves. The Konyak people cry. In the land where the Ang resides, we cry, we cry, and we cry. Yeah. 
I now invite the president of the Cognac Union, Kohima, Mr. Ang Ye Cognac, to take his time. A wounded tiger is more furious and danger than a group of tiger. A person mind with sorrow, eyes with tears, and a heart with anger is standing in front of you all. Thank you, Program Committee, for giving me this opportunity in such a big uh, tribute program. Respected Chairperson, Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Honorable Leader of NPFLP, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Ministers, Advisors, Respected Government Officials, General Secretary NPCC, Tribal Leaders, Church Leaders, Ladies and Gentlemen, They shot at us. We were not signaled to stop. They killed my friend. We never tried to flee. We were just inside the vehicle, but they shot at us mercilessly. These are the words of Mr. Saiwang Konyak, one of the two survivors of the brutal and the savage attempt to murder innocent civilians by the bloodthirsty 21 paramilitary special force of Indian Army. On that very fateful evening on 4th of December, eight boys from Uting village, a gold miner and a daily wagers, they were returning from Tiru gold mine to their village in order to spend the Sabbath day that is the next day. Before they reached their destination, the Indian army waylaid them and murdered them. When they did not reach their home, feeling worried and sensing some danger, the relatives and friends went in search of them. They encountered with the Indian army the army sensing the truth to be revealed, the Indian army again fire, fired mis mercilessly to the rescue party and again murdered another seven person. On the 5th of December, one precious life was lost again at Mon headquarters. The barons are still waiting for their sons to return back, to return home. But it was so unfortunate that only their dead bodies arrive at their doorstep. Every parent has a wish that their sons will perform the last, the, their sons will perform the last rite of their parents. But in this case, the parents has to perform the last rite of their sons. Is this killing not a genocide? Are Indian army above humanity? The Indian army should not take what they cannot repay it back. That is precious life. The existence of peace and harmony in our land was a hard earned peace. It was due to the great initiative of church leaders, tribal leaders, students' organization, and Naga people from all walks of life. If Delhi, if Delhi doesn't want peace and wants to wage a war with Nagas, we are ever ready to retaliate. But Nagas are peace-loving, 
citizens. The Indian army should not take the advantage of the so-called words, peace-loving citizens. The number of the population, the number of the war equipment is not the strength to wage a war, but the unity of the people and the heart is the strength to wage a war with any nation. If Nagas was given a choice to fight a war with any of the nation in this world, at this moment, in Nag Nagas will choose a nation which allows its soldier to freely torture and kill its own people. If Delhi wants to live with a peaceful coexistence, Nagas in particular and the Northeastern in general, they should revoke the so-called Draconian Law, the Armed Force Special Power Act, 1958, immediately. The fake stories and the misinformation regarding the incident at Uting by the mainland media house and even to the extent of Indian Parliament by the Honorable Union Home Minister and claiming of those innocent civilians to that of terrorists have multiplied the pain and anger to the Nagas in particular and to the people of Northeastern states in general. It is like adding a fuel to the fire. With this kind of behavior from the Indian leaders, the natural instinct in us did for that an eye for an eye, is increasing in our mind day by day. At this moment of pain and sorrow, we call upon every Nagas far and wide to stand united, strong, revise, reposition as a free Naga. Our Gonyak Union headquarters Mon has sum submitted a memorandum with some chatter of demand. Do His Excellency, the President of India, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Honorable Union Home Minister, and many dignitaries of, of the center and state. By feeling the pain, hearing the cry, and seeing the unity of the people, all over the world. The center government of the day, with the God-gifted wisdom, should immediately revoke Armed Force Special Power Act without any delay. With this act still exists, we don't want to see another Uting in the country. My dear fellow Nagas, if not today, when? The next victim might be you or me or our relatives. The killing of the innocent civilians is beyond one's understanding and tolerance. Our hearts are heavily laden for the loss of precious souls. The world is not spoiled by the bad people, but due to the silence of the good people, so let's not be silent and fight for justice until it is delivered to us. We will not break the momentum we are getting at this hour. The Gonyak people appreciate and convey thanks to the state government, different organizations, especially those who postpone their long awaited program. No distant states, people from all over the world, each and every individual for the solidarity and the support you all are showing till today. We hope you will continue till justice is delivered to us.
words cannot express, but let Almighty God bless you all. Before I conclude my speech, here is a passage from the Holy Bible. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are down short. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteousness fall, but you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful will not live out half their days, but as for me, I trust in you. Amen. Kugnalim. Thank you, East Story, and Mr. Angie Konyak.
Thank you, Bozio. May those who come behind us truly find us faithful. May the footprints that we leave lead others to believe and inspire lives to obey. The Ame Uso Zao and the Choir is a singing group with its forte being contemporary folk fusion and choral music. The songs are written or arranged by the director herself, and this choir was formed in 2012. Today's group has 50 members from 12 different churches singing a medley of folk song and finally ending with the Hallelujah Chorus. The Hallelujah Chorus is a resplendent work of worship which was written by George Friedrich Handel. And it has ministered to kings and common men all over the world for centuries to come. I would like to request that when you get the cue at the beginning of the chorus, kindly stand to your feet in the middle of the program of the Ameu Sozao Choir.
Chief Minister Shri Wai Patun to deliver the vote of thanks. And after his speech, we shall conclude this tribute program with a prayer of blessing. Please, sir. Is Judge Wema, Honorable Sir, here. Not forgetting our General Secretary NBCC, Zalu. First and foremost, I want to thank the Almighty for his never-ending mercies and for being with us today and always. This is indeed a time of sad moment for all of us and particularly for the families of those who lost their lives in the tragic incident that happened on the fateful evening of December 4th and 5th, and unrest that followed. We have gathered here today in our interior to share the grief of and the communities. I would like to thank Honorable Chief Minister for his presence. Reminding each other that a precious life laws are not forgotten and justice will be delivered. and we are in referral hospital told me that one patient may even take months together or may even take a year to recover. Two patients, because of this uh, bullet broken injuries, bullet condo or Broken bullet will be inside their body 
for their whole life. So I want to request our church leaders to send this message to our church leaders to have a special prayer for their speedy recovery. Shall we all bow down our heads for prayer? In the presence of the Holy Spirit, rest in abiding.